Guess what? We're not on Jeannie's back porch. Not this afternoon anyway. This is Jeannie Robertson and this is a pop-up. So the first person who comes on and his name rolls up after the show has started, which was just then, wins a free book. We do that every time. Some people have been trying to sign up just randomly at random times, but that's why we don't tell everybody when this is coming on because quite frankly, we don't always know. And the reason that I'm not on the back porch in Burlington, North Carolina is I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here tonight to be on the Grand Old Opry and then again tomorrow night. And we will do my genie live from the back porch here from Nashville. And I'm staying with Peg and Al McCree. They are the people in charge of the Nashville people who book my shows. And I'm staying with them uh, these three or four days. Came here yesterday and uh, so we've gone somewhere, maybe this place I like right here in, in this room and I like this sofa, so that might work. Do we have a name yet? I don't see any names rolling. Janet King. Janet King is the first person who popped up after it did it. So Janet, let us know where you're from. Most importantly, go to Tony, T-O-N-I, at Jeannie Robertson, no I in Jeannie, uh, dot com. Right there it is on your screen. Tell her that who you are and she'll have your name and then tell her what you want. Do you want to, everything is eligible for you to choose from except the brand new seven CD package of audio books. So you can get the book. If you're the first one in, don't bungee jump naked and other important stuff. And then you can get a, the, the baseball left brain baseball cap if you want that or any of the DVDs or CDs. Um, and then congratulations to you. So let me tell you a, a couple of things. Uh, tomorrow we will be live from here and I have all of your questions. And if you remember, I told you we dumped all the questions after last weekend's show. And wasn't that a fun show with Jason Hewlett? It was just so much. Everybody has been on. It's been a lot of fun. But we're starting over with the new year and told you, we said, go ahead and send your questions for this. And y'all sent some excellent questions. And so they will be the new uh, questions that we'll go with. Some people said, you ought to dump them every week and we'd have a better chance. And that's a possibility. And dump them every month, whatever we're thinking. But mainly, your odds of winning tomorrow are good. Now, if you've got a question that you want to send tonight, the problem is I can't run it off and chop it up and get it into the bag tonight because we don't have a chopping machine here. If I come here again, I'm going to get him a paper cutter because that's how we do it. But the um, I, I appreciate all the questions this week. They've been great. For the heck of it, let me ask you a couple of ones that we did get. Some pe person, well, not some person, Pat Gardner wanted to know if I was the class entertainer in high school. So I don't know if any of the people who were in my high school class are watching in, happen to be watching in today. But if they are, I'll let them answer that. I think there were some girls in my class that were fu funnier than I even, a couple of them. And so let's see what some of those, if we don't get any responses, I'll tell you whether I was an entertainer in high school. Another question came from Paula Hoffman, and your names will be put in for the draw tomorrow for prizes. Paula Hoffman says, do you have a favorite author? What kind of books do you like to read the best? Uh, and Paula is from Iowa. Well, Paula, you're going to be disappointed in me if y'all think I'm just a meek, mild, want to read a love story, blah, blah. I like anything written by Lee Childs, and that means murder. And then he just says some people have to die. They're bad, bad people. And I can't, he can't write them far, fast enough for me. And I, of the characters I like, he didn't write it, of course, but Harry Bosch 
and it says if somebody's what is his saying all the time if if one person's not treated fairly nobody's treated fairly and then i like all of the mysteries from up in um, virgil flowers i just like it's i get on the airplane and i want a book i've had a kindle i've had it all and but i have a little book and i just kind of burrow down into my seat and read all that gory stuff i kind of like it to tell you the truth and here's one deanna stevens from sparks Nevada. How does your family feel about you telling stories about them? I've just always wondered about that. Listen, my family is dying for me to tell stories because one reason I run the stories by them before I dare tell them, start telling them. And I'll say then when after I've told them, say on the road for a year in the shows and I'm taping or I'm writing a book, I go to them and say, now look, cut bait or fish. Can I use your name? in this story and do you like the way it's written? Sometimes I get in trouble with that because I say, well, I wish you changed this on page three. But anyway, you put up with that too. And they've always let me let me do those things. And that's my cast of characters also, Norma Rose, Tony, Jane Tucker, Beaver and so forth. And somebody, I don't think I have this particular um, question pulled out right now for this, this down here, but somebody said, what did I give Beaver for Christmas? I send Beaver what I do every Christmas. I send him a check. And the interesting thing is I mailed it two and a half weeks before Christmas and it's not there yet. And it, it's like it's like our roles have reversed. He said, Mother, did you just say that? And did or did you really send that? Oh no, no. It'll get there. If not, we'll make it right. Um, so let's see what else is happening tonight. If you want to listen to the Grand Old Opry, and by the way. I'm not sure. I would think it would even be stronger during COVID if you ask me. Remember, it's radio. And the usual prediction in this right hour is 2 million people listen on Friday night and Saturday night worldwide, listen to the Grand Old Opera. So this is a great opportunity for me to get to show off. And usually you get up to eight minutes. But tonight they told us um, people get a little longer. 50, up, maybe up to 15. So one of you wrote uh, uh, upstairs, I have the questions for tomorrow and I was trying to throw out the ones that we should not be asking and throw the others in the bucket. And somebody was saying things like, what do you do uh, to get ready for a show? Like, do you go into the room and look into the mirror and walk over in circles and all? And I, I don't, but you do think about what you're going to tell, especially if you have a tight timeline. For example, I'm leaving this house in a little while with plans to tell because we are in Nashville and I'm on the Grand Ole Opry to tell the story called titled, you don't know Garth Brooks. And then with the extra time, follow that up with uh, don't, don't line dance in the ladies room. Of course that features another country song. And so that may work out, but I have two more stories playing for tomorrow night. And I don't know, I might get over there and change my mind. I might just decide somebody could say something to me like, I love that such and such story. And I would calculate the time in my head and see if it would possibly work. So I also, what I did today a little bit, you, you might've heard it in there. I was in there in the bedroom and I was sleeping really, but I would punch my cell phone. And if I was telling a story at night, I would listen to the YouTube clip. I'm not trying to run out the numbers. Trust me. I'm just trying to see what sentence could I possibly leave out in here that would mess this up because I haven't been speaking as much lately. We did the seven shows in South Carolina, but um, it's just a little different for all of us this year. So let's see. Do you have any questions? I know Tony may be watching. I'm not sure, but Peg is upstairs on your computer. So if you have anything you want to, Quickly asked, that's fine. I know you and Tony went to Auburn and your major was physical education. What was your her major? I think, well, we were there at the same time, sort of. And then after several years, she got married. I think Tom was co-oping. And if you don't know what that is, you don't go to to the schools that we do or you had to go. This is when you, you work a semester and then you go back to school a semester and then you work a semester. They're a tiny bit older than I am, not much. And um, she was in a sorority. She was a 5U, I was an Alpha Gam. And we loved it. Now, we we didn't win the game. I, I think you, Evelyn, no girls, were you just pointing out that Auburn just got clobbered in their bowl game by Northwestern? I've already heard, Al, 
from uh, Glenna Salisbury, who said, I just thought I'd write and tell you, I, don't forget, I went to Northwestern. I'm not rubbing it in. Of, of course not. <laughs> of course not, Glenna. Y'all remember Glenna because she was on this summer and y'all loved her. So I guess that's it. If you see any more questions, um, but listen tonight, I'll be on early. And this is very interesting because, uh, first of all, to stay with, um, did you ever do a commercial for a gas company? Oh, Janet, I can't believe you remember. I can't remember. It was in the 70s. I did. Well, I didn't get paid for it because it was Left Brain's company. But I sure did do a commercial. As I re I'm going to lose all my listeners here. I said there, I said, hello. What was it? It said, and I have gas. The reason was the propane people had gas, but the natural gas lines did not. And they were trying to put a commercial out that said, hey, we got gas. You can count on propane. And I was the one that would got on TV like a nut and said, hi, I'm Jeannie Swanner Robertson and I have gas. Naturally, it got the attention of the listener. And then I went on to say, I'm referring to the propane dealers in the state of North Carolina. You got a question right here? Great. OK, clarify the showtime. Oh, thanks, P. Um, I'm usually calling and doing all this from North Carolina. The times that we gave you, the Opry starts at 7 Central Time. Nashville is Central Time. I come on tonight at 7.30. Again, tomorrow, 7. And it goes till after 9. And then so many different performers come on. But that is, thank you, Peg, that is Central Time. Okay. And there it is. And listen at www.wsm.com. And just listen live. It is radio. The first time I went to the Grand Ole Opry years ago as a professional speaker, I sat there and I was mesmerized because while the people were entertaining in the front, maybe five or six or 10 feet behind them, people were standing around having a conversation because it was radio and shaking hands with people and saying, hey, and of course, that's the way it is. OK, I think that's all I have to say. Oh. Y'all have, we asked for you to do something for us last week and you sure have been nice about it. Um, remember that we did not get the uh, seven CD audio version. It says read by Jeannie herself and then it's seven hours and 20 minutes. But the reason that we didn't get them out to you earlier was we didn't get them till Tuesday before Christmas. But Tony Meredith, good old Tony, had all of the packages, excuse me, Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Al. Al just got my attention on something else. Um, what was I talking about, Al? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Tony got them all out on Tuesday, and uh, immediately people started calling and telling us that they had gotten it right there at Christmas. We could not believe it. And of course, we have some people that haven't gotten them yet, like Beaver had in his. Oh, hi, Beaver, you rock. Well, you want to send him some money? No, he doesn't need our money, but thank you. And so we're going to wrap this up. And um, when we get back from the Grand Old Opry tonight, Peg's going to have cooked us a traditional uh, January 1st meal. And, and she's a real good cook. She doesn't know it, but I don't eat black eyed peas. I'll tell y'all more about that tomorrow. In the meantime, Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a Break out the money. Jeannie's being funny, talking about the bungee jumping, flooding out the house. Weather's turning colder, Ashmina's on her shoulder. Just ask her about fashion, she knows what it's about. Wrapped in with a Baptist, left brain got the shopping list. Jeannie's got a way to keep you laughing from the porch. Tony on the phone call, kicking laundry down the hall. Dude, 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 now on Genie's back.